Nancy Brunstein, and I work for SVP Worldwide. SVP stands for Singer, Viking, and Pfaff, and I work in the Viking and Pfaff Education Division. And I'm here today with Karen Charles, who is also an educator in the Viking and Pfaff Division. Welcome, Karen. Um, Hi. How about introducing yourself and uh, introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your sewing life? Well, I I've been with uh, SVP for almost 20 years, 19 and a half years. And I started managing a store and I became an educator six years ago. And I, I can't imagine a job that would be more fun and more exciting than helping other people learn the joy of sewing and embroidery. And it's exciting every day, um, just talking to people and getting them excited with new techniques. And it, it's, it's an incredibly fun job. I'm lucky. So we, we aren't traveling now because of the um, COVID situation, but we look forward to doing that soon. So you've been home more. Has there been anything you've been particularly doing that's been fun or interesting, creative? I'm sure there is because Karen, you are one of the most creative people I know. Well, I've been lucky. I, I live on Lake Champlain in Vermont and I'm not used to being home in the summertime. So usually I kind of, I'm gone for a week and I come back for a few days and then I'm gone again. So it's been really exciting to be home this summer and enjoying the beautiful weather. And uh, I even got out on a boat and got into the water a few times. So it, it, that's been a new experience for me because uh, I didn't think I would be seeing a summer like that for a long time. But uh, I, I do love my sewing room. It's, this is a small fraction of what you're seeing right now. And I'm lucky to have uh, time to be able to sew an embroidery. We've been doing some virtual events too. And so we're still getting out there just in a little bit of a different way. Yeah, the virtual events that we've begun to do, we are beamed into the store via the internet while the students are able to be in the store sewing on a project that we've designed on the top of the line machine. So it's not as, um, fun it's not as much fun for us as actually being there but at least the students get together and sew together and i'll tell you they have been hungry uh, to get back together and sew with their sewing buddies so everybody's been very excited when they go to these classes and uh, we are looking forward to the day when we can actually be there with them but yeah. luckily with these the technology today we can do the classes over the internet yeah that's true very lucky and have you been um, doing any particular type of sewing or embroidery during the time you've been home? I have been just busy doing all kinds of things. And, and I was actually going through a little bit of a time where I was, uh, didn't have any new inspirations and I was wondering what was going on. And then all of a sudden, like it usually happens three o'clock in the morning, I had a great idea. And so now I've got some new projects started that I hope I'll be able to show soon. And, but, it, it comes in waves. Sometimes you, you don't have an inspiration and all of a sudden you get hit by so many. So I have a lot of projects that have been started and I've been waiting for that next piece of the puzzle uh, before I finish them. So now I've got uh, quite a few things that I've got ready to, to uh, finish up and get, and get going. So I like to push out after I've done something, then I'll, uh, I'll publish it on my Facebook page to kind of keep everybody else inspired too and my Instagram page. Well, I see some samples behind you. Anything there you'd want to share? I see one um, that perhaps people haven't seen before, uh, a technique, of, oh, there's a bag, I think, with some felting on it. Is that the butterfly? Yeah, this is a, a, um, a felted design. There's no thread here. This is the felting needles that have pushed the fiber through. And, and I do a lot of different types of felting. And I, I, before I even started this, I was doing felting by hand, and that was time consuming and tedious, uh, where something like this can take a very, very little amount of time and you get some fabulous results. I've got another one here. There's a felted design on the denim. And uh, I've even got landscapes that are done with felting. Yeah, with felt, and, what, what, the way that it's done is you put um, either felt or, or actual wool or roving. In this case, it was roving that was put down. And then I used Aquamagic underneath and Aquamagic on top. And I just kind of laid things where I thought I might want them to be. 
And I used to design in the Quilt Block Wizard, which basically just gave me rows of straight lines up and down and side to side. And every time the needle would go up and down, the felting needle would felt the fibers. And about halfway through, I lifted the Aqua Magic up and there wasn't a lot of detail. So I cut some red yarn and I took some darker green and laid it down and then laid the Aqua Magic down and then it kept felting it again. This took about an hour and 15 minutes. So it's not time consuming, but it's very creative and it kind of gets you doing some things that are a little bit different. And I you think what part of this design in, uh, in the uh, quilt wizard, as opposed right. to the butterfly, which is a, a already created. That's right. Designed for felting. Right. And what makes this a little bit more unusual is the mat that I used and framed with it was really an, an ugly white mat that didn't look nice. And I took a little bottle of craft paint that had uh, metallic, you know, the bottles you can buy at the craft store and just brushed it on with a foam brush. And it adds so much more dimension to the uh, felted design because it, it just kind of carries it out to the frame. Yeah, that was a great so, idea. A lot of fun things you can do with that. But believe it or not, my very first project that I ever sewed, I don't know if I ever told you this, Nancy, was my wedding dress. You are a brave woman. I was young, I had no money. And, uh, you know, I, I probably could have done something, but I thought, no, I'm going to make it. And my mom had made clothes for me when I was young, but they were always just a matter of necessity. And so I never really enjoyed sewing for myself. And I didn't really do any sewing at all until I got married and made my wedding dress. And it was a simple design. Uh, it was, you know, an empire waist. It had a lace overlay and I was using satin. And it, it didn't turn out bad. I mean, it was nothing that I was embarrassed to wear. And uh, so from then on, I kind of got really excited about where else I could go. And when my kids were very young, I started quilting uh, as a way when they were napping, I would go and sew. And it was a kind of an escape in a way, but it was also so much fun. I loved the geometry of uh, making your own quilt designs and experimenting, experimenting with how things go together. Um, and, and it just kind of grew from there. But I, I never thought I'd be interested in embroidery uh, until I got involved uh, working with all the different machines. I had a, um, my father-in-law bought me uh, a Husqvarna Viking when I was, um, my kids were really young. And what was so fun about that was he saw how much I loved what I was doing and the machine I had died after six months and I didn't have any money to do it. So he said, find something that you know is gonna last and that's gonna do everything you want it to do. And all I really wanted to do was have a needle up down and a couple of stitches. And so uh, I had my first Husqvarna Viking um, way back then and it, it's still alive today and still working wonderful. Um, but as uh, years have gone by, uh, I started working with both Husqvarna Viking and Foff and uh, for such a long time, I, every machine has got its own special unique features. And uh, I'm always excited to see the next one coming out because it always blows me away. And the very first time I used an embroidery machine, it was like uh, the heavens open. There was just so many places you could go. Yeah, and uh, I've been excited. Time. Again, you'd make your own lace, right? You'd use your- Yeah, no, I make my own lace. I make anything like that. Actually, I have a little sample here. Let me grab it. This is a scarf that I made and the lace, you'll see that purple. This is a, they call it bobbin lace because it's meant to be done with a heavier uh, thread, but I use the rope Nanton rayon. Uh, the color was purple uh, tulip and it matched the fabric. And so look at how beautiful that is and how much it adds. If you wanted to find a purple lace like that, it would never happen. So just to be able to, make something and find something in the color that you want is is pretty extraordinary and you know I love color almost every quilt that I do has every color in the rainbow there's very few projects I have that are monochrome so uh, I'm excited to be able to make things well well that bobbin lace if you were actually yep. making bobbin lace with the bobbins it's a it's an old folk art it would take you hundreds of hours to make that on that. Yeah, but this was really nothing at all. I used the endless hoop and just kind of let it kept going while I was working on my other machine. That's why you always need more than one machine. You can be doing two things at once. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Two top of the line machines. <laughs> well, yes.
<laughs> Goes without saying, right? We're, yeah, we're lucky enough to have um, the top of the line machines of both Husqvarna of Viking and Foff. And we've got sergers and we've got some other machines too. So it keeps life interesting and it keeps our, our brains active, that's for sure. Yeah, always something new. So do you have some more samples back there you might want to show us? Well, one of the things that I love is doing continuous embroidery. So the big quilt that you'll see back on the wall that it's not really a quilt, this is all embroidered back here. And it's from a, a design that's on my Sonnet library, which both uh, Who's Front of Viking and Foff have, uh, their top of the line machines, have the ability to uh, have the subscription where you can find designs and and both Foff and Viking have had different design, designs over the years that are really extraordinary. I think they're some of the nicest designs that exist today yeah, and, and that was happened to be a collection that I loved. What's that? The MySonet library is available 24-7. It's a subscription yeah. service and there's over 4,000 designs on there that can be used both. Over 5,000 now. 5,000 now? More. Yeah, they add more every week. I can't keep track of it, how many there are. There's some. Yeah. And you but can I didn't start doing this type of thing. I started simpler by doing quilt designs and using design positioning. Because when I had my SE, design positioning didn't exist. And then when we came out with the, the designer diamond and the ruby, and on the FOSS side, we had the uh, 4.5 and the Creative Sensation Pro, they had precise positioning. It allowed us to go in and zoom in into an exact stitch and line something up so that you would get perfect results. So I started working with quilt designs, like this is an example yeah. of a larger quilt design that was done in two steps. And the stitching is beautiful, front and back. And that kind of got me moving with the idea that if you can do this with a quilt design, you can do it with any embroidery design. Here's another one. Again, this one is in the library. It is from the whole cloth quilt collection. And it's just a whole quilt that's all embroidered or quilted, if you will. And if you look at the back, the definition on the front and the back is absolutely phenomenal. And yes, if you look at the, the quilt behind you, Nancy, that's the same design. Yes, Nancy yes. used a really unique technique to color in her quilt. We should get them to tell you, tell us how you did that one. Well, mine is just a, a sort of a, a blooper because I picked a type of, I picked this gray fabric that I thought would look good with navy blue thread and I didn't like it. So then I colored it in with fabric markers. And that and that's phenomenal. Fun. Yeah. You would never know that those two quilts were the same. So different. Now yours is made with silk, is that correct? Yeah, I used silk. I used a, like a coral color silk uh, dupioni on one side and then that fuchsia on the other. And I used uh, a color that was a little darker for the quilting so you would see it. And on the back, I used one that really blended in. So, um, but the, the quality of the stitching front and back is absolutely phenomenal. I consider our top of the line machines to be like a long arm with automation. Because if you had a 10, I did have, or do have a 10 foot long machine that has automation where you can load a design and touch the button and it will, it will, um, you know, follow the path to quilt your quilts. Well, that's exactly what our embroidery machines do. And we don't need to have our room filled up with a 10 foot space. We, now that we have such large openings in our sewing and embroidery machines, they can handle a king or queen size quilt very easily. And so I got very interested in quilting my quilts with my embroidery machine, because I can do it for an hour and then go and do something else and change my mind and come back to it whenever I'm ready for it. And uh, I, I absolutely love quilting my quilts with embroidery. And do you remember what type of batting you used with that silk quilt? Oh, every time I do something different. In the silk quilt, what I did was I used wool with that because wool's got a nice loft, but it's very light. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be very good if you need to fold your quilts, like I'm traveling, so I usually fold them up. It's supposed to be good at not leaving fold marks in your fabric. So I thought I'd give that a try. A try. Um, wool is also really great, even in the summertime, if you live in a warm place, it, it is very cooling. And in the winter time, it's very warm. So uh, I'd like to kind of experiment with different bats. Sometimes I use a fusible fleece. Sometimes I'll use uh, warm, you know, uh, Quilter's Dream Cotton. 
Other times I'll use, um, there's a, a one that we sell that's called So Soft Fusible Batting. It's by Inspira. And it's so light that it's just perfect for clothing or for something where you really want a lightweight quilt. And uh, originally with this uh, whole cloth quilt, what I was gonna do was make a jacket, quilt all the fabric and then cut it up. But when I was done, I would just couldn't bear the thought of cutting it up because it just looks so nice. So I decided to leave it as a one whole cloth piece. And any, any other samples there you wanna pull out? Oh, I have a few. Uh, this is another thing that I love to do. And most of the time when I'm embroidering or quilting, I'm trying to think about how I can save time because I, I don't always have a long stretch of time to work on things. So this is one of the uh, design and it's basically an outlet design where it stitches the black thread or you could do it in other colors. And then afterwards I colored it in with you either fabric markers or Sukuneko inks or um, my new passion is the um, Inktense pencils where you can color them in and shade. And I've done a lot of videos for this type of thing. If you're interested, this is a video that's on YouTube and it's on my Facebook page too. And so those are the kind of things where it may stitch out in 20 minutes. And then by the time I finish coloring them, it's another 10 or 15 minutes. So it's a project that can be done in a morning, which is what appeals to me so much. Now, do you remember how you did the outline around the white? Was that in the software? The, um, or... uh, that I did free motion afterwards. Like but if I had brought the design into the software, uh, and I've done this many times, you could bring the design into the Quilt Block Wizard and then fill it with anything, any different kinds of sewing stitches we have on our machine as a motif, or you could put stippling or something else behind there. And so this, there's lots of options. Many times it's just in the mood that I'm in and deciding, uh, maybe I haven't decided what I wanna do. So I'll just go ahead and, and do the embroidery and then come back afterwards with it. Another design that I'm absolutely, I think this qualifies as my favorite thing that I've ever made. It's another design that's in the, my Sonnet library. It's also a Moroccan tile. And I did it with this little fringe that was a purchase fringe that's so cute and uh, done on a black cotton velveteen but the colors just glow. Yeah. And every time I look at it, it makes me smile. So I just love it. Um, there is an invisible zipper in here that's so invisible that I usually have to feel for where the tab is to be able to find it. And I use the invisible zipper foot to put that in. But, um, but it, it's, just, it's just so nice. I've done this many years ago and yet it, every day I look at it, it makes me smile. So that's the fun thing about embroidery. You really can add a lot of, um, fun to your life by surrounding yourself with the colors you love and the designs you love. Yeah, I tell my students that if it's not moving, I throw it under the needle and embroider it. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever possible. That, that is kind of the way that I work too, I have to say. Um, and, I, and I like embroidered clothes. I do a lot of embroidery on clothes. Um, and I, I work with a lot of different fabrics, not only silks, like this is an example. Uh, this was a design collection uh, we had Madeline, and then we had another one that came out that was uh, Marigold. And these are beautiful designs. They're meant for a quilt. And the fabric is a stretchy knit. But the designs and the colors are absolutely exquisite. Here, I should show you the right side. I was showing you the wrong side before. And that, again, you used Aqua Magic underneath? Yeah. But when you see how beautiful you can embroider on a stretchy knit like that, and have the results be just exquisite. And it just makes me want to try something new every time uh, I see some new designs. This is one of my favorite items, but every single one of the designs on here is a part of that collection. It's beautiful. So any um, tips or favorite techniques that we haven't talked about that you want to share? Well, I think sometimes the most challenging thing for people is being willing to make mistakes. So I didn't, you know, just sit down and magically understand how to do these things. I, I think the most important thing we can learn and teach others is to don't be afraid to try something and fail. Uh, because every time you make a, a decision and you try something, and if you don't like it, almost always you've learned something so valuable that will make the next thing you try successful. 
And so you don't get um, to be uh, really good at anything unless you make mistakes and try again. Don't give up. A lot of times I'll pull out something that I was working on months ago or years ago that I put aside because I wasn't happy with where it was going and pull it out afterwards. I've learned so much in that last year or two that all of a sudden I have a brand new idea that is going to make that item be far nicer than it would have been if I just worked through it at the time. So, you know, don't be afraid of putting something aside for a while and coming back to it. It, it is our biggest challenge sometimes that we're hard on ourselves. And when we're working on something, if we don't like it, it can get frustrating or we can be a little hard on ourselves. And I think it's so important to let yourself make mistakes and learn from them because you will be much more um, ha happy with the results than if you were, you know, just being cautious and careful. You know, make a mistake. And keep that seam ripper real close by. Yeah, I, I don't often rip things out, uh, I have to say. Uh, most of the time, the, the colors that I choose or the styles of something, if something's not perfect, I'm gonna find a way of camouflaging it. I will just, if I don't like exactly the way something is put together, I'm gonna find some way of coming over it with something else. Uh, you know, maybe I'm gonna applique a flower over it or do something that nobody's ever gonna know. So in my book, there's no such thing as mistakes. It's just a matter of a learning opportunity to uh, get better at what I do. And, and that's a hard notion for a lot of people. Yeah, but it, obviously it works, looking at all those beautiful- Well, I, and I enjoy it. And I, and I try to give myself permission to not like something and let that go for a while and come back and look at it later on. And almost always, I, I like it better than I thought I did but you need to get away. You need to put some distance between things sometimes. And Karen, you mentioned you have um, some videos up. Where would people find these videos? What's your... Well, I have a Facebook page um, for Who's Friend of Viking. It's Karen Loves to Quilt and Sew. And the FOF one is Karen's FOF Quilting and Sewing Corner. And I, I try and put brand specific things on both of those. Uh, techniques for all up and down, not just embroidery. And then on YouTube, I just post things under my name. So if you put Karen Charles in YouTube, you'll find there's, there's a few dozen on there right now. Uh, I've done uh, 12 with Quilters Newsletter and uh, most of those are pretty easy to find. And then I've been posting a lot of them myself, how to use different feet, how to use some embroidery techniques and uh, I'm trying to get more prolific and get more videos up. So that was my major accomplishment this year. In uh, February and March, I learned how to edit videos. So now I can start to put together some quality videos. And uh, I've been putting my skills to work while I've been at home. So it's getting exciting because uh, I'm starting to feel like I can put together some videos that are really going to help people to learn more about using their machines. And you were interviewed on a podcast, I think about six months ago, maybe. Um, do you remember the name of the podcast? Was it oh. American Patchwork and Quilting or no, it was... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can, I'm very sorry, I can't remember. Oh. But th there's a lot of stuff out there. It actually shocks me and my kids if they put my name on there that it actually brings things up. But luckily for me, it only brings good things up. <laughs> There's no Karen Charles out there doing wicked things. There are a lot of Karen Charles out there. There's designers. There's all kinds of different people named Karen Charles. Uh, most of us seem to be pretty good um, and, and pretty happy people, despite my name. There's actually, so. I live in a little tiny town, and there's actually another Nancy Bronstein in, oh, the, wow. in our little tiny town. You know, <laughs> I think she's a children's author, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, uh, you wouldn't think that in a town of 7,500, there'd be two Nancy Brown scenes, but yeah. Well, if you put Karen Charles quilting, they're more likely to come up with it. You won't come up with the designer and all the other Karen Charles out there, but, uh, but I've been very, you know, I'm so blessed to be working with such wonderful machines and having, a, you know, who has a job where you can love what you do every day and be so excited to learn new things and, Every time a new technique comes up or a new product comes out, we get to experiment with it and have fun. And I, it, it's really a pretty fabulous 
uh, life to be able to work and do something that you love to do. Yes, it is. Well, I think on that note, that's a good place to end the interview. I am uh, going to say goodbye. And uh, Karen, maybe you want to say goodbye to everybody. And, but oh, that's enough. wonderful. Make sure that you know, look us up. And we love to hear from all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this interview. And if you did enjoy it, please feel free to go to your local dealer, Viking or Foff, and inquire about potentially having one of these educators come to your local store so you could take a class with them. Also, if you saw this uh, interview on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. There are many other interviews coming up or already posted. And if you saw this on Facebook, please like, like the video and leave me a comment. I hope you all stay well and stay safe and get to have fun sewing very soon. Thanks for joining us.